So this video is a how to do a blue ocean strategic initiative. And it comes out of the work that I've done. I've done over 120 workshops in the past several years for companies and CEOs who are interested in understanding how to change their business. And I became a devoted fan of blue ocean thinking because it was very much like the kind of work I was doing with customers to try and find new market space. So I want to tell you more today about how you can do a blue ocean strategy and why you should. So why should you? Um, the first thing is that when they studied businesses, over 150 businesses, over 100 years, what Rene Maubon and Chan Kim were doing in their research was to try and understand what companies did to thrive. How did they find new markets? How did they open them? And how could they put together a process that other people could also use? So I combine that with the kind of work I did as an anthropologist and a business executive to understand the application of it. So the first thing, I'm a numbers junkie, so let's talk about the numbers. Of the 150 companies, 86% had line extensions. That represented about 62% of the total revenue, but only about 40% of the profit. The 14% that they studied that had opened up blue oceans of opportunity that were unmet needs for non-users in a whole different way, well, that represented about 40% of the revenue, but about 60% of the profit. So there's something in approaching a blue ocean that opens up much better margins and gives you an opportunity to open up new market space. The red ocean is a very bloody one. I'm not going to go into depth about the difference between blue and red right now, but red, you're competing in the same market you've always been in, and you're pushing each other around. There's diminishing demand, the supply is abundant, and you're having a hard time staying afloat. Blue ocean is unmet need. You're creating demand in new market space that you haven't filled yet. So the five essential points of a blue ocean strategy, and then I'll show you how to do them. The first is how do I add value in an innovative way? Not just add value, but in a different way. How do I make it simpler and easier for people to use my, my products and services to solve their unmet needs? The second thing is, how do I make the competition irrelevant? So let's forget about those other banks or those other retailers or the other clothes. Let's focus on what we're doing and how we're adding value. The third part is, how do we change the value cost trade-off? What am I going to eliminate and reduce that no longer matters to add and create in new ways? whole interesting process by itself. The fourth thing is we're going to focus on non-users. Non-users aren't going to competitors. They just haven't found a solution yet. I always love what went on with the electronic online banking that completely challenged the branch networks in a much more efficient way to raise deposits and to loan them again. Better margins. And the last one is how do I align the organization? Because by and large, people come to work to make a living. They don't come to work to um, help you open up new market space. They don't even know there's a problem, by and large. And often, they can hear all sorts of ideas, and they have no place for them to go. So how do you align your organization so they become leaders here? So what to do? Two stories to share. I like stories because it helps you understand that it really is something I could do. So one company is called Telerex, and they are part of Merck. And they are a, a very successful customer care business, really rated among the top in terms of telephone service for major corporations. So when we worked together on building a blue ocean strategy, they began to realize that the whole world that was younger than 50 years old didn't use the telephone the way it used to be used. If you have any kids who are at 20 or 30 or 15 or 10, they all text. So if people are texting and they're using online frequently asked questions and they're using chats and blogs, what will the telephone be in the next generation? And so they opened up a whole new market space providing services to their customers to help the younger generation provide customer care. Now the clients weren't driving them, they drove the clients. So all the whole supply chain had switched. They were educating their clients on what was happening in the market space that offered new opportunities for customer care. The second is a chain company in St. Louis, and the Cleet chain was actually a wonderful company. And Jim Riley, who was a wonderful person to work with, um, discovered that sales had, had flattened. And so he tried to change his cost structure, and sales stayed flat. And what he began to do was engage his entire organization to listen to the calls coming in online and when he realized that what people were calling, not for snow chain, but for chain. 
and he began to realize he had a whole different way of solving the chain problem, not simply the snow chain problem. I can give you case after case of people who, by listening to what customers were asking for, or what from people were searching for, or watching how they were clicking online, and what kinds of things they were looking to solve, hmm, there was something that was unmet and they could solve it for them. So, if you want to do this yourself, let me take you through the tools of a Blue Ocean strategic process, and then you can try them, or we can help you. The first is a visual awakening. Unless you accept the fact that you really don't know how to change to meet these changing times, you're not gonna go anywhere. Your brain is gonna stay locked in what you know well, and you'll keep doing it. I've had clients who 90 days into our engagement haven't changed anything, and they keep saying, why? I said, because you can't change unless you wish to. So the visual awakening starts with, I need to understand where I am and where I'm going. And we use a strategic canvas to help you see how you can identify the investments you're making today, how you compete with others, not a good thing to do, and then what are the unmet spaces that you could work into that are completely different. So the first thing I have clients do is a strategic canvas. The second is a really identifying what am I looking for that's very different. So I have clients go explore, and I help them. Or you can go out by yourselves. Think of Undercover Boss as being a perfect illustration of having to see, feel, and think differently about what you're doing. You know, go out and be an employee and see what's going on. So there are many different ways to do this. Deep hanging out is often what it's called observational research, it makes it more, more professional perhaps. But you can go hang out and watch. Take a little black book, go on a thought walk, go sit in an office, take a video camera, um, take a still camera. Ask customers to do a video diary for you. What you're looking for are ways in which they have unmet needs that you can solve that they can't tell you about. What are you looking to do? What you're really looking to do is how do we make buying easier? How do we make working the product line or doing it or using it simpler? How do I reduce the risk, which is a very big issue in the business to business world. How do I reduce the risk so that you feel more comfortable trying something new? How do I make them more productive? I can't tell you how many situations where if I make my clients more productive, then they're making more money and they, they can't realize how acceptable that was and how wonderful and efficient it made them. Environmentally friendly, people ask me all the time, is the environmentally friendly business sustainability a business? And across the country, it's clearly becoming so. What are you looking for? You're looking for non-users, and they come in three different styles. The first are those who occasionally used you. And I always love starting with customers, said, who's your onesie? Who came to you for two things? Who came to you occasionally for a something? And how are they solving it, and who else could use that? So who's the occasional? The second non-user have really refused to use you for whatever reason. They don't like to do it that way. The third group are those who have never thought of you as a solution. They didn't know that there was something you could offer them because they categorize you in one fashion, anchor you in that category, and you compete among others just like you. But what could you do for them that they haven't thought about? Where are they? So you have to shift your focus. Typically, you're going to think inside your industry. In blue ocean thinking, you have to think across it. You have to think across market segments. So if you focus the mid-market, go up or down. How could you open up market space by thinking broader than that? How about buyer, buyer groups? I always love what pharmaceuticals did by going direct to the consumer. So that you came into the doctor with information about that purple pill and why weren't you taking it. So I think that you need to think about going direct to the end user if you sell to middlemen. And many of you tell me, oh, my middlemen will get very upset. Well, if you both do better, perhaps they won't. And what role do they play? The middleman is under great uh, siege now because it's easy to go direct to the consumer. So what's the advantage of having a middleman? Fourth, what's the scope of the product? I have um, a lot of clientele in the medical field. And there's a gentleman who was very proud of running a doctor's office with 20 doctors. But I know a gentleman who runs 80 doctor offices and growing and has a whole different business model. So what's your business model? Is it small, or could you make what you do available to a wider audience? Can you change the scope of what you're doing? Functional and emotional. Are you functional or emotional? People buy with emotion, justify with reason. How could you make it more fun? 
Scrubs and Beyond is a wonderful company in the retail business that sells scrubs, both online and in retail stores. Scrubs are what medical um, professionals wear. It's not fun, uh, but they made it fun. So could you make it fun? And how could you make wearing my scrubs a real hoot in some fashion or buying them a lot of fun? And last time. So I, I, Apple is always wonderful because they've leapfrogged over, if there's a word to leapfrog, they leaped over everything else that was there, the MP3 player and the phone and the computer. And next thing you know, they've integrated it in a whole different way and they've pushed us into a new time zones that we never anticipated. You couldn't have asked for an iPad and I'm dedicated to mine. Shifting. All of this is going to require you to shift the way you invest in things. So there's a whole exercise we do called the ERRC. What are you going to eliminate? My E. Reduce, my R. Raise and create. ERRC. Because you don't have enough money to do all the things you used to and still do the new as well. So what's your ERRC? You know, Yellowtail Wines stopped being sophisticated around the way it prepared the wine. And it really wasn't terribly concerned about the terminology because it was talking to non-wine users. The palate wasn't terribly important. So now you need to think about that as well. So you've come up with all these ideas. You've done your strategic canvas. You've gone exploring. Um, you've begun to think about non-users, gone across industries looking for opportunity. Time to go back to that canvas. I can't tell you how useful that canvas is. What should you be investing in next? And how do you draw a to be canvas, a picture's worth a thousand words? And then take it out to non-customers and talk to them about it. Take them out to customers and see what they think. Very important that you get echoes. And what you'll find is very often the things you think are important aren't at all. And the things that you don't know about are real important. It's a great catalyst. So your to be future strategic canvas comes next. Should you? Well, I can only tell you that there's a blue ocean waiting for you there. If you don't believe that, then not much we can do. But there are people who have needs that you haven't started to meet, and they're doing go-arounds to get around this in ways that are inefficient and ineffective. And if you can make it simple and easy <coughs> for them to choose you and use you for new things, you'll find a blue ocean that's really effective for you to swim in, and very productive and very profitable as well. Tell us your stories. We like to share them. The two stories I share today are people who would be delighted to talk to you about how they, too, are opening up innovative solutions in new ways to non-users. I hope it has been of help to you. Please let us know how you're doing. Thanks today. Bye now.